take you through the examination of the cardiovascular system. So first we will start with the general examination. I am going to be looking for Pala first. Now I am looking for Icterus. I am again looking at Pelo. I have also examined his face to look for a male rash. Next I will be looking for clubbing. You have to lift up the hand so that the fingers are at the same level as your eyes. Look also for splinter hemorrhages in the nail beds. Look for palm erythema and Janeway lesions. Next we will look for ankle edema. The place that you have to examine for ankle edema is about 1.5 to 2 cm above the medial malleolus. Maintain pressure with your index finger for about 15 seconds and see whether there is a pity. You can also check for clubbing, splinter hemorrhages, drain lesions, etc. in the feet as well. Next we will get on to cardiovascular system proper examination. We will examine the pulse first, the radial pulse. Feel for the radial pulse with at least two fingers. And once you have felt the radial pulse, time it for about 15 seconds to get the rate and the rhythm. The volume is ideally taken with the carotid pulse, not the radial pulse. And I will also check for collapsing pulse now. Put your hand over the radial pulse so that your palm is directly over the radial pulse. Put your other hand underneath the elbow and gently lift up to see whether the pulse is collapsing. Next we have to check all the peripheral pulses starting with the carotid pulse. And here I'm checking for the pulse volume as well. And I'm going to be checking both carotid pulses. Next I will check the brachial pulse. And get on to the femoral pulse. Ideally you should be exposing the patient and feeling the groin for the femoral pulse. Next we will check for the leg pulses, the peripheral pulses. This is the dorsalis pedis. This is the posterior tibial. And we'll also be checking. We'll also be checking for the popliteal pulse. Ideally, this should be checked with the leg held in with the knee held in slight flexion. Yantan Dani Sinaman. Finally, to complete the pulses, we have to check whether there is a radio radial and a radio femoral delay. So put both hands on the abdomen like this and check both radial pulses at the same time to see whether there is a radio radial delay. Next, for a radiofemoral delay, keep the hand next to the femoral pulse, feel the femoral pulse and the radial pulse at the same time and see whether there is a delay. When you are checking the blood pressure, make sure you select the correct cuff size a normal size cuff because this man is a normal size person but if it's an obese person you have to select the larger size cuff make sure the cuff is put like this about two centimeters above the cubital fossa and that these two tubings are just above the brachial pulse where the brachial pulse is felt Make sure that your BP apparatus, the hand and the heart are all in the same plane and then when you are compressing, when you are pumping up the blood pressure, uh, make sure that you are feeling the pulse.
and the, when the pulse disappears, go another 20 centimeter, 20 millimeters mercury above, and then put your stethoscope over the brachial pulse and bring down very, very slowly. Bring down the mercury column extremely slowly. When you first start hearing the heart sounds, that's your systolic blood pressure. The point at which the heart sounds, be the, the sounds become muscle, that's your diastolic blood pressure. This man has a normal blood pressure of 120 by 70. The JVP, the jugular venous pressure elevation, should be examined with the patient at a 45 degree angle and with the neck slightly turned this way. Look for the pulse in the anterior triangle, you will see the carotid pulse and just next to that you will see the jugular venous pressure. You should ideally be observing from a little further away to examine for the JVP better. Next we get on to examination of the precordium proper. First inspect for any signs of any abnormalities in the inspection also look carefully whether you can see the, uh, the, the apex beat, whether the apex beat is visible, the pulsations are visible and also whether there are any other pulsations visible. Look for scars carefully in the center as well as on the sides. Look for any other deformities. Next we have to feel for the apex. If you can't feel the apex in this position, then you have to gently turn the patient over to the left lateral position and feel for the apex in this position. Okay. Once you have felt the apex, you need to see exactly where the apex is and you need to start counting from the second intercostal space. Feel for the sternomanipria joint here and this is the second intercostal space just lateral to that. Second intercostal space, third, fourth, fifth intercostal space, and go for the mid clavicular line. This apex is in the fifth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line, and it feels normal in nature. Next, we have to feel for a parasternal heave. You can feel it with the palm of your hand, or you can even use your fingers. And at the same time, you need to see whether there are any palpable heart sounds in the usual areas. The pulmonary area, the, the uh, lower left sternal edge, and in the aortic area. So once you have completed your palpation, we don't percuss the heart, we move on to auscultation. That also must proceed in a logical sequence, you have to start with auscultating the apex first. Listen to the apex with the diaphragm of your stethoscope and if you hear a mid-diastolic murmur and you want to hear it better, you can turn the patient back again into the left lateral position and listen with the bell of the stethoscope when you will hear the murmur better. The two murmurs you have to listen here for are the mid-diastolic murmur of mitral stenosis and the pan-systolic murmur of mitral regurgitation which will radiate in the same intensity to the axilla. Next you need to listen at the tricuspid area. Again you are listening for a pan-systolic murmur either of tricuspid regurgitation or a VSD. And you're also listening for the early diastolic murmur of aortic regurgitation. Next, we will auscultate the pulmonary area. Here, you should be listening to the ejection systolic murmur that you hear in a ASD, atrial septal defect, and the loud P2 of pulmonary hypertension. Next and finally, it is the aortic area just lateral to the manubriosternal joint and here you are listening for the ejection systolic murmur of aortic stenosis 
and you should also be listening over the carotids bilaterally for the radiation of this murmur to the carotids. So first palpate the carotids and then auscultate bilaterally for the radiating ejection systolic murmur. If you hear an early diastolic murmur in the lower left sternal edge and you are suspecting an aortic regurgitation, you need to get the patient to sit up. He meet in the gun. You have to ask the patient to take a deep breath, put it out and hold the breath in expiration so that you hear the murmur better. Usmak hayyeng ihelata gan, dem pahalata dan, usma allagin inna uspa pahalata dan. Okay. At the end of the cardiovascular system examination, if you suspect heart failure, please auscultate the lung bases for fine bivasal crepitations. Also ask the patient to lift up his hands to see whether there is any sort of a neurological abnormality. Addeka keling is rata digarin. Usala. A neurological abnormality is likely if the patient is having mitral stenosis as in and is in atrial fibrillation where there is a high risk of thromboembolic disease. At the end of the examination of the cardiovascular system, don't forget to thank the patient. Oh, Mr.